he was actually slated for a tour of Japan. And if Delroy was alive today, Delroy would have been earning money all over the world. All over the world because he's a man who has the hits, love songs, reality songs, roots and culture, etc. But sadly, he's not here, and so many others. So, you know? how, how can we learn from what's happening and, and, and get Jamaica to, to actually own those? Um, well, well, right? Well, it's about, well, about self education, and what really has to happen is that the artists. The producers, remember, a producer is the one who goes into the studio and produces the music. In other words, a producer is like a farmer, giving instructions, knowing what musicians to blend with, what singer, what DJ, what engineer will go with who, and to produce that sound. So a good producer, like a good farmer, produces good crops, good music. You see what I'm saying? And of course a good farmer knows the necessary ingredients, just like a good producer knows the necessary ingredients to produce good music. Because let's not fool ourselves. There's good music and there's bad music. Music is food, and you have either good food or bad food. <laughs> and that's the reality. And what is really needed is that the people in the industry need to form an association, a kind of trade union, to safeguard and guarantee their interests. We have had the Jamaica Federation of Musicians for many years, but really and truly, what has the Jamaica Federation of Musicians done for musicians? Really? Not much really. <laughs> and, and that's the reality. Are, are there many members of that particular association? Well, there used to be, but the membership has fallen off because people are not really seeing what benefits that they would be getting from the JFM. And remember, the JFM has been around for many, many years, from before reggae was born, from before Rockstead. It's been around for many, many years. So. You know, it's no use crying over spilled milk. We have to do what we have to do now. Those veteran artists who have survived, meaning they are still living here today, we have to help them because they are the ones who laid the foundations. You have producers too who got a raw deal and are also and also ended up in poverty. So it's not just singers and DJs and musicians. There are also producers who were ripped off by foreign companies. That's a reality. So would you say that, that um, with the current market, people are, are artists and producers are more in charge of the, their own product? Would you say? And you know they are and, more. And they are more in charge. Yeah. And sadly, at a very crucial time because this is when piracy is on a DIY basis. Anyone can pirate now. So now, what has caused a slump in the industry has virtually wiped out the industry, so to speak. Piracy. First, it was a CD piracy, whereby people could go to any market, Wembley market, Vauxhall market, Camden market, and places all over England, for example, and you could be getting four or five of the very latest reggae CDs for 10 pounds. It's similar to how you could have a lot of um, Chinese going around selling four or five of the latest films, not yet released, films not yet released, for four or five, four or five of them for 10 pounds. So when you as a producer, executive producer put your money out and invest you have nothing to get because the pirates they get in the way in terms of pirating your stuff selling it for the prices that i have said and the final death blow is internet piracy 
whereby over 90% of the people actually go on their computer and just steal music for free. I'm not putting it up about downloading for free. It's stealing. If you and I, Norman G, go into any shop and take an item out without paying, we would be arrested and charged for theft. It could be a sweetie, it could be a soft drink, it doesn't matter. We would be arrested for theft. But somehow, so-called governments in England and in Britain allow people to use their computers and to steal people over the internet. It is theft. And then some of these um, thieving corporations that indulge in this type of activity, they even have unscrupulous journalists. You know, I said something about good food and bad food. You have good journalists and bad journalists. They have some bad journalists who are advocating and saying it is okay, nothing is wrong with downloading and stealing people's music. I read their articles all the time in papers. Sometimes they come on talk shows on TV or radio stations and try to justify the stealing of people's music. This is why so many producers have stopped producing because there is no incentive. Why should you produce music for other people to make the money? It doesn't make sense. Bobby Digital is an excellent producer. He hasn't been producing for many years now because of the same problem of piracy, CD piracy and internet piracy and so many other producers.